Hello, today I'm going to speak about the Pastafarian religion and internet phenomenon, and specifically the colander headgear worn by people who claim to be members of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, FSM for short. To start, I believe it's important to give a quick rundown of the history of Pastafarianism. Pastafarianism is a satirical religion created in 2005 by Bobby Henderson in an open letter to the Kansas State Board of Education in response to their decision to allow the teaching of intelligent design in their school system. Henderson claimed that an unseen being was changing the results of his lab work with its nudely appendage. Henderson also makes claim that the rapid decline of the number of pirates, who he says are the original Pastafarians, is the cause of the rise of global temperature averages. Henderson uses these statements to argue that Pastafarianism should also be taught in schools alongside scientific fact and creationism. From that letter sprang an internet phenomena and movement known as the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, where an individual's claim to worship a sentient being made of spaghetti and meatballs. So what does all this have to do with a colander? Well, it's quite simple. Spaghetti is made in a colander, so it's only natural that a colander would act as a symbol for a group that claims to worship a being that is made of spaghetti. However, the point of this video is not to just give a simple explanation, but to dive deeper into the hidden meaning of such an object. Shown is an image of the aforementioned colander placed on the head of a self-proclaimed worshipper. The individual shown is wearing the colander in a driver's license. This is allowed due to laws that allow the wearing of religious headgear in official personal ID photos. Such laws are typically put in place to prevent religious discrimination and allow for individuals to wear any religion-mandated headwear they feel is necessary. Breaking this down further, there is a lot that can be said about taking advantage of such laws. An individual who chooses to wear the colander in their ID might do so for a variety of reasons. They could be making a point about religious privileges. They could be earnestly desiring to show their support of Pastafarianism. Or they could simply be trying to be funny. The reasons for wearing the colander are of course not limited to just those, but those are the three I would like to focus on for the point of this video. Number 1. Religious Privilege the topic of religious privilege is a tricky one. There are many religions in the world and many ways a religion might gain some sort of societal privilege in any given part of the world. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on the driver's license. There are many religions that require adherents to wear some sort of headdress at all times, such as the Islamic hijab, the Jewish kippah, as well as many others. The requirements to wear such items have caused many countries, including the United States of America, to adopt laws that allow people to wear religious headgear in their ID photos, something that is usually not allowed. These laws are designed to allow adherents of religions with headgear rules to not have to remove their headgear while taking government-mandated ID photos. Someone who is staunchly atheist might see this as a religious privilege due to the fact that the religious individual is able to do something that the non-religious person is not. The individual might then choose to wear the colander in their ID photo to make a point about the larger religious privilege that they perceive. Number 2. Earnest Support Support is a little harder to gauge due to Pastafarianism's stance as a satirical religion, but it is certainly a possibility that an individual might feel so strongly connected to Pastafarianism that they wish to wear the colander. On top of that, they could just simply be wanting to spread awareness of the existence of Pastafarianism, and wearing the colander is the perfect way to do that. An individual with a piece of kitchenware on their head is sure to turn some heads in their local DMV. Number 3. Trying to be funny Pastafarianism is an internet meme, and as such, there are individuals who will join in on the movement for the simple fact that they find it funny. A large part of Pastafarianism's appeal is its absurdity, and individuals who are atheists might find it humorous to see if they can get away with wearing a colander in their government-mandated ID photo. Now that we have covered the colander and its connection to ID laws, I want to dive a little deeper into the examination of the colander. Mainly, I want to talk about the outside perception of the colander. To someone that is not aware of Pastafarianism, the sight of an individual with a colander on their head would be a shocking one indeed. A child might find it funny. Anyone who is aware of what a colander is, but not Pastafarianism, might simply be curious about it. What about those who do know of Pastafarianism? A supporter might get excited, whereas a deeply religious individual might be upset about the colander, especially if they perceive the individual as trying to argue that the colander is the same thing as other religious headwear. So what separates the colander from other headwear? Well, first and foremost, you have sincerity. Individuals who wear the colander on their head are seen as less sincere about their beliefs than individuals that wear other headgear. 
This is partly due to Pastafarianism's stance as a religious statement as opposed to an actual religion, and partly due to the colander itself being seen as a mundane object. The fact that a colander is not an actual piece of headwear, but instead a kitchen utensil that has been converted to be such, might also affect someone's perception of an individual wearing a colander. This partly has to do with the fact that a colander is not seen as a hat, and because it's seen as not being an actual piece of religious garb. Pastafarians are also sometimes seen in a pirate outfit, and in fact, that was the originally mentioned garb in the letter to the Kansas State Board of Education. The following is from that letter. Furthermore, it is disrespectful to teach our beliefs without wearing his chosen outfit, which of course is full pirate regalia. I cannot stress the importance of this enough, and unfortunately cannot describe in detail why this must be done as I fear this letter is already becoming too long. The concise explanation is that he becomes angry if we don't. The pirate outfit has its own issues, mainly being the fact that even though the outfit is actual clothing as opposed to kitchenware, it's still seen as insincere in its presentation. In fact, the entirety of Pastafarianism faces this problem of sincerity. People simply are not willing to believe that the religious statement is anything more than a joke due to its absurd nature. The fact that Pastafarianism is not taken sincerely could in and of itself be a point. People are only willing to believe in or otherwise respect something they can understand. The idea that a giant flying spaghetti monster wants us to wear kitchen tools on our head does not necessarily fit into the general narrative. However, that challenging of the narrative is precisely what Pastafarianism is trying to accomplish. By creating the movement, Bobby Henderson has provided us with a shocking and unique lens to examine religious values and privileges. Using that lens, we can dive a little deeper even into the colander and its meaning. To do that, I feel like we should talk about religious garb in general. Religious garb is any clothing worn by an individual for the purpose of worship and adherence to their beliefs. This garb can be a simple headdress like the aforementioned hijab and kippah, or it can be a full-body religious outfit. Religious garb, especially in recent years, can be very controversial. There are sometimes claims made from secular individuals that individuals who wear religious garb are being oppressed. This is especially seen when talking about the Islamic faith. Countries such as France have even come under fire for rules that keep people from wearing such garb. If even legitimate religious garb is seen as oppressive, then how would one view the garb of a satirical religion? That's not really a question I can personally answer, because I am not an adherent to a religion that wears garb. However, I can say that an individual who wears religious garb is probably more likely to see the colander or pirate regalia as a religious insult than someone who is not a member of a religion that requires garb. This is due to the fact that the colander could be seen as mocking their garb. That then begs the question, is the colander mocking religious garb? Some would argue that of course it is. How could it not be? Someone wearing a kitchen utensil on their head and claiming it's their religious duty to do so might be seen as directly mocking someone with a more legitimate reason to wear their garb. But why is quote unquote actual religious garb any more legitimate than the Pastafarian colander? The answer to that question is once again sincerity. As I have mentioned a couple of times, Pastafarianism was not designed by Henderson to be a legitimate religion, despite the claims of the letter in the website. Pastafarianism is a statement about religious values, and a very loud statement at that. Due to this difference of wearers of religious garbs practicing deeply held beliefs that they have, for the most part, lived most of their lives following, and Pastafarians simply making a statement, the colander and other associated garb is seen as less legitimate and in some cases, mocking. Finishing up, I want to bring this all back to this object of the colander itself and why it's a symbol for Pastafarians everywhere. The colander is never mentioned by Henderson in his letter, but over time it was adopted by individuals who sought to spread the message of Pastafarianism. This is due mainly to the easy association between a colander and a being made of spaghetti. Even though pirate garb is the Henderson-mandated garb in his letter, most people you see mentioning Pastafarianism more closely associate the colander with the FSM than they would an eye patch and bandana. This change of association is itself a product of the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster taking on a bigger name than its creator. Once it was released into the world, people decided to interpret the teachings of the letter through their own individual lenses. 
Thus is the fate of any meme. Meme here referencing, of course, both the Richard Dawkins definition of a meme and the more colloquially known internet meme. People will interpret things as they choose to. A lot of individuals who hear of Pastafarianism might not bother doing deeper research and reading the letter. Some might simply see the obvious religious statement and feel they don't need to dive any deeper into it. Thus, we get the colander instead of the pirate garb. Individuals attach more to the more obvious association than they do to the intended and orthodox interpretation of Henderson's writings. I want to end this video by saying thank you for watching, and I hope my breakdowns of the colander shed some light on a widely known but little understood internet phenomenon.